best way to study is to take practice tests. And if you can't find practice tests, go to learnmytest.com, the place to go to create and find others multiple choice practice tests. I'm Brian Collin, and today's topic is heuristics. Heuristics are rules that help you make a decision or solve a specific problem quickly. In this video, we'll talk about some examples of heuristics and how they can lead to irrational decisions. Steve frequently attends church and organizes and attends anti-abortion protests. He enjoys hunting in his spare time and drives a Ford F-150. Pause the video and answer the following question. Steve is most likely to be A, a construction worker, B, a Republican construction worker, or C, a Republican construction worker who watches football and wrestling. The correct answer is A, a construction worker, because a Republican construction worker, construction workers who watch football or wrestling, also fall under the category of construction workers. If you picked B or C, you picked the description that you think best represented Steve rather than the one that was most likely. This is called the representative heuristic. If you can, tell me which is more. The first one is the number of words in the English language that start with the letter K, and then number two, the number of words in the English language that have K as the third letter. Most people say number one because they can think of words that start with the letter K like knocked, kick, or key, but it's more difficult to think of words that have K as the third letter. Since examples of words that start with the letter K are more available or accessible in our brain than words with K as the third letter, we think that there is actually more in the English language, but really, that's not true. This is called the availability heuristic. Josh and his friend Wes are having a basketball debate on Facebook. Wes thinks Michael Jordan was a better player than LeBron James, but Josh thinks LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan. To prove his point, Wes starts looking for statistical categories where Michael Jordan outperformed LeBron James to support his argument. By searching for evidence that confirms his belief that Michael Jordan is better than LeBron James, Wes is ignoring evidence where LeBron James may have been equal to or outperformed Michael Jordan. This is an example of confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is searching for evidence to confirm what you believe is true and ignoring evidence that says the opposite. Let's say Ben brings a diamond ring into a jewelry store to ask how much it's worth, and the salesman says it's worth $10,000. Ben takes the same ring to a different jeweler to get a second opinion, and the second jeweler says it's only worth $1,000. How much do you think the ring is really worth? Pause the video and write down a price. Did you pick between $5,001 and $10,000? If so, your decision may have been impacted by what's called the anchoring effect. The anchoring effect is when the first value that is placed on an object tends to impact its perceived value more than the values that are put on later. Imagine that you have $200,000 saved up for retirement and are presented options to invest. For the first $100,000, pause the video and divide the money up over these options. Number one is stock fund one, fixed income fund two, fixed income fund three, fixed income fund four, and fixed income fund five. Now divide your, the remaining 100000 among these five options. Stock Fund 1, Stock Fund 2, Stock Fund 3, Stock Fund 4, and Fixed Income Fund 1. The reason that you may have put more money of the second $100,000 in stocks than the first $100,000 is because there was a greater proportion of stocks to choose from. Naive diversification is when people decide to diversify when they get overwhelmed with having to make several decisions at once. Let's assume that the stocks turned out to make more money than the fixed income. But since you have already invested in the fixed income funds, you continue to put your check in there hoping that it will turn out to be a better investment than the stocks. 
The escalation of commitment heuristic means that once you have already put a certain amount of time, effort, or money into something, you look to validate that decision by spending more time, effort, or money into it, even though it may not make sense to. Tim has put his blood, sweat, and tears into his burger shack for 15 years. When he goes to sell it, his asking price is too high for buyers. The effort heuristic is when the perceived value of something is based on the effort put into it rather than its actual value to others. Pause the video. Now I want you to place a random value on the one ruby in the picture in each of the 10 diamond rings. Many of you probably valued the ruby higher than the diamond rings because there was only one ruby and 10 diamond rings. The scarcity heuristic is when we perceive something that is less abundant to be more valuable. Joe has lost a bunch of money on the slots and knows if he keeps playing, he'll probably lose more. But the excitement and emotions of playing the slots lead him to go to the ATM and take more money out so he can keep playing. Making decisions with emotions is known as the affect heuristic. Congratulations, you win a free card. Now pause the video and pick which one of the four cards you want. I think you must have noticed that car C and D are the same car, except for car C is broken and needs repair and car D is intact. So since car D is not broken, car D is clearly a better choice than car C. But is it possible that while determining that car D was better than car C, did you ignore cars A and B? The similarity heuristic is choosing between two options because they are similar while ignoring the others that are different. Now you may be saying, well, I didn't even choose car D. I chose car B because I like convertibles, and I knew that right away. Take the best heuristic is when you make a decision based on one thing without taking into account the other aspects. For example, buying a car because it's a convertible and ignoring the difference in price, safety, gas mileage, or other features associated with cars. Imagine that you're flipping a coin 10 times. The coin lands on heads the first five times. What do you think the coin will land on the sixth time? You may assume that because it hasn't landed on tails yet, that tails will be the more likely outcome, even though heads is just as likely. The gambler's fallacy is when you expect something to happen because it hasn't happened in the past recently. What city is larger in population? New York City in the United States or Seoul, South Korea? If you are from the U.S., you probably recognize New York City knowing that it is a big city and the biggest city in the United States. So you picked it not really knowing the size of Seoul. If you were South Korean, maybe you did the opposite. You knew Seoul was a big city and didn't know much about the population of New York City. So you would guess Seoul. Recognition bias is when we overvalue information from an option we know when deciding between an other unknown option. Those of you that are wondering, Seoul is actually more populated than New York City. How can I avoid using heuristics to make irrational decisions? If it's an important decision, take the time to get informed on every option. If you aren't, that could be a precursor to flawed decision making. Value data over personal experiences, individual examples, and sales pitches with a compelling story. One story or example that you can think of isn't always the rule. Remember, the power is in the data and numbers. Understand that how the objects are presented are going to impact your perception of each option. Things to remember are what value or option was presented first. What feature was the first one you noticed or one that looks superior to the others? Look at the options that aren't similar and also consider options that lack diversity. Recognize that as a human, you rely on heuristics and are prone to flawed decisions. Be willing to separate from your past decisions and do what's best for the future rather than looking to reaffirm them. 
Making decisions that conflict with our past decisions or beliefs are difficult because it makes us feel incompetent. This is called cognitive dissonance. The best decision makers are usually able to separate from their past decisions. The best way to study is to take practice tests. If you can't find good practice tests, use Learn My Test to make your own. Learn while you do it and use your test to reinforce the material. Check it out for free at www.learnmytest.com. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, click on the Learn My Test icon below to subscribe to our channel. We'll be posting new psychology videos every week to help you ace your psychology courses.